Hey, third graders, it's Mrs. Linderman here. Good to see everybody. I want to read my story to you today. Um, you might have already read it last week, but I want to point some things out that should be included in your story, thinking about all of the lessons that we've done for writing, not just in this unit, but all throughout the year. So I want to kind of point some things out to you. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and read my story. And I want you to be thinking as well, when you read through your story, make sure that each of your paragraphs, right, there should be five paragraphs and you're going to know there are five because you're going to see it right with your eyes. There's going to be that indent. There should be five paragraphs. Do your paragraphs match those shapes from your power organizer? Right, the information that you had plugged into that, is that what you actually wrote about? And if you didn't, you need to go back and fix that, right? So here's mine. It's called Kindness Matters. Rushing to the long, skinny lunch table, Tilly could smell fresh hot dogs lingering in the air. She plopped down her pink polka dotted lunch bag as Sarah and Claire sat down beside her. As Tilly started to unwrap her PB&J sandwich, she heard Sarah's cruel giggle. Then Sarah whispered, Look at that new boy in the wheelchair. Tilly's ears started to burn and it felt like they were as red as a campfire. She sank into the cold metal seat. This happened all the time and Tilly was questioning her friendship with Sarah. A few minutes later, the girls were spinning around in circles on the merry-go-round. Billy, a boy in their class, clutched Mark's wheelchair handles tightly as the merry-go-round came to a screeching halt. Do you want to get on? He inquired. Sarah interrupted before Mark could say anything. Why would you want to play with him? Meanwhile, Tilly and Claire scooted toward Mark as he patiently awaited his first ever ride on a rusty old merry-go-round. One, two, three, whispered Billy. With a little boost, the new friends steadied Mark near the closest handrail. Billy gave a forceful push and around and around they flew. Mark's eyes were as big as saucers. Andy hollered, this is so cool. His fingers turned bright red as he held on to the bars for dear life while they twirled. Giggling with dizziness, the fun continued. Sarah chimed in. Or Sarah chimed in again as she jumped off. Why are you guys pretending to like him? Tilly was at her limit. Without thinking, she screamed, Go away, Sarah! Creak! The merry-go-round came to a standstill. Everyone just looked at each other. Tilly was ashamed of herself as she hung her head. She could see Sarah leaning against the brick wall, crying. Tilly gave Claire, Mark, and Billy a sweaty high five and hopped off. As the other kids continued to spin, Tilly slowly walked over towards Sarah and tapped her on the shoulder. Hey, Sarah, I'm really sorry I lost my temper. It's just that you always talk about other people. I have fun with you and all, but not when you're unkind and treat people like they don't matter. Sarah looked up as tears streamed down her rosy cheeks. I'm so sorry for being mean to Mark. I know it was wrong. It's just that you were having more fun with him than you were with me, she sobbed. Tilly smiled and replied, that's not true. I think he'll forgive you, Sarah. You just need to be honest and apologize. He's a really nice friend, and I think you'll like each other. They hugged and ran over to Claire, Mark, and Billy to share the good news. Thankfully, Sarah realized that in order to have a good friend, you first need to be one. Her classmates were all relieved to hear Sarah's explanation and agreed that they would forgive her. After all, they wanted to show her what a good friend looks like. Now I want you to pay attention. Right? I have two pages here. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. And remember I told you there should be five paragraphs because you have five shapes on your power organizer. Okay, here is my first paragraph. I can see that because I have that indent, right? And my spaced, my lines are spaced so I can read them. It's not all crunched together. Here is my second paragraph. Here's my third paragraph. You see how your eyes can see those paragraphs because of those indents? Here's my fourth paragraph. And finally, my last paragraph, which is my fifth paragraph, right? So the top one here, right, is your top triangle. 
here's my first rectangle, my second rectangle, my third rectangle, and then here is my bottom triangle. So you should be able to see your five paragraphs. I want you to also notice I use some figurative language. Did you add any figurative language to yours? Right, we've talked about that during the year, so you can add something like that. I have a lot of adjectives, right? I'm describing the lunch table. It's, it's a long, skinny lunch table, right? I've got lots of adjectives. I've got lots of strong verbs. I don't know if you noticed in my story, thinking about, ooh, strong verbs, right? So not just those boring everyday things, but like when Mark was talking or asking a question, he inquired, right? Words like interrupted, right? twirled, giggled, right? Some really good strong verbs. I double checked. Did I have capitals at the beginning of all my sentences? Were all the names and proper nouns capitalized? Do I have punctuation at the end of my sentences? Maybe I need punctuation in the middle, right? If there's a pause and there's a, some commas that need to be in there, just like right here. As Tilly started to unwrap her PB&G sandwich, she heard Sarah's cruel giggle, right? So whenever you would pause in your sentence, you need a comma there. I've got dialogue. Hopefully you have dialogue in yours. We had a lesson on that. Remember we did tags at the beginning or tags at the end. Remember when someone's talking, we've got those quotation marks. We call those, those talking marks around what they're saying. You should be able to punctuate that properly because we had a lesson on that. And you've got information on that in your writer's notebook, okay? Finally, there's transition words or maybe even phrases. Look at this, a few minutes later, that shows me the passage of time, right? Meanwhile is another one, right? Think about your lead, your ending. Does your story have a beginning, a middle, and an end, right? So you're paying attention to all these different things as you revise and edit and publish your final piece. I also added a title, Kindness Matters, right? So even if you have turned in your um, writing, go back to it. Double check yourself, right? We had lessons on revising and editing. Your job was to do that. Now that I've read mine, hopefully you can see where I've added things like strong verbs and adjectives and figurative language. You can see where my five paragraphs are and those five paragraphs match the shapes on my power organizer. So you wanna make sure that everything is tied in together and it all works together so that you know you have turned in the very best realistic fiction story that you, ha that you have in you, right? This is our last writing unit of third grade. You wanna know that when you go into fourth grade, you have so much that you've learned that you can take that with you as a fourth grader. All right, can't wait to read your stories.